Hello everyone, my name is Luca Del Pero. I am an engineering manager at Leaf Level 5, where I work on our program for mapping and perception from commodity sensors, like cameras. In this section, I will cover maps, how they are used in Autonomy 2.0, and how we can build them at large scale. High definition maps are used throughout the entire Autonomy stack. They contain accurate information about the static environment and its traffic rules. For example, where stop signs are, which lanes need to yield to oncoming traffic and so on. Like Perception, which works online and in real time, maps are typically computed offline before SDVs are deployed because rich and accurate prior knowledge of the environment helps SDVs drive more safely. HD maps consist of two main parts. First, a 3D geometric map, which is essentially a 3D model of the world, for example, a point cloud that SDVs typically use for localization. The second part is the semantic map, which contains information on traffic lights, road markings like lanes, traffic rules like guild relationships, etc. And this semantic information is all overlaid on top of the geometric map. HD maps have been a key component of Autonomy 1.0. For example, rule-based systems like the Planner need highly accurate maps to work. And HD maps remain a very important requirement for Autonomy 2.0 just as well. And in the other sections of this tutorial, you will in fact see several examples of machine learning models for prediction, planning and simulation that need HD maps in input. And since Autonomy 2.0 gives us a path to deploy SDVs in many new areas more easily than Autonomy 1.0, as Peter explained in the introduction, it is important that maps can scale equally well to support deployment and data collection in large geographical areas. In the remainder of the talk, I will look at existing processes for building HD maps, focusing on how we can build them at large scale. I will cover geometric and semantic maps separately. And at the end, I will discuss whether in the long run, we see Autonomy 2.0 having the same map requirements as Autonomy 1.0, which is an open question. Let's start with geometric maps. Typically, these are built using dedicated mapping operations, where SDVs equipped with high definition LIDARs collect sensor data in the air we want to map. Then, a SLAM algorithm is used on the data to build a 3D map. SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. This technique has been around for many decades and is the cornerstone of geometric mapping. The goal of SLAM is to build a map of an unknown environment from the sensor data collected by a robot, while at the same time estimating the location of the robot in the map. This is a chicken and egg problem because we need the map to localize the robot and we need to know where the robot is to build the map. Factor graphs are a good way to visualize the interdependencies among the observation we get from the sensors and the variables, which are the position of the robot over time and the 3D position of the landmarks that model the map of the environment. Map and robot location are optimized together so as to be consistent with the sensor data that the robot collects. The formulation of SLAM is agnostic to the sensors used by the robot, but when we build geometric maps for AVs, we typically use IHD LiDAR, which allows SLAM to produce very accurate maps. And we can also rely on additional sensors. For example, you can use INSS and wheel odometry output as additional constraints. Let's now look at the challenges in scaling geometric maps. While HD LiDARs bring very accurate maps, they are expensive, which means that having fleets of vehicles dedicated to mapping is also expensive, especially if you want to map large areas. The second bottleneck is the need for dedicated mapping operations. For example, we need dedicated drivers and dedicated processes to dispatch and operate the vehicles used for mapping. One way to address the LiDAR bottleneck is to build geometric maps from commodity sensors like cameras. The process is actually very similar. We first collect data with vehicles, this time equipped with cameras, 
and use visual slam techniques to produce 3D maps. There is, however, a difference in accuracy. Vision-only maps tend to be less accurate and robust than LiDAR ones, for example, due to weather conditions or illumination changes. Recent work has shown that it is possible to make visual slam more robust by aggregating lots of data. For example, in our ISMAR paper, we build geometric maps from vehicles equipped only with monocular cameras from mobile phones, which are low cost and very scalable. Uh, however, when all we have is data from monocular cameras, typical visual slam algorithms might fail to build an accurate map of say a particular street due to, for example, occlusions or bad weather. We address this robustness problem by aggregating images collected by multiple vehicles through time, which are likely collected in different conditions. Our results show that aggregating large volumes of diverse data greatly increases the robustness of our visual slam method. Note that an important requirement for using lots of data is having a highly distributed slam system, like the one proposed in this work. The second bottleneck is the need for dedicated mapping operations when it comes to geometric maps. To address this, we can instead use crowdsourced data, which greatly improves scalability. For example, we fed the visual slam system from the previous slide with data crowdsourced from a ride-sharing network and managed to build maps of the order of several thousands of miles. In our work, we assume that we do not have any control on where the vehicles used for crowdsourcing drive, so we have to accept that we naturally get more data from popular areas with high traffic. If we instead have some form of dispatch control on these vehicles, there are algorithms for self-organizing where they drive, and this allows reaching full coverage of the area we want to map more quickly. To sum up, a combination of visual slam techniques and crowdsourcing gives us a path to large-scale geometric maps. However, geometry is only uh, one part of the picture. The autonomous stack also needs semantic information, such as the road markings or the traffic lights I mentioned earlier. For this, the industry often relies on manual curation. Human operators add highly accurate semantic content by drawing and clicking, for example, by drawing lane boundaries on top of the geometric map, which we see here in bird's eye view form. This obviously does not scale well. Machine learning is how we can automate this process essentially replacing human drawing with an ML model that can solve the same task. Let's look at a concrete example. This work here takes an input and intensity image from LiDAR and uses a deep network to predict lane topology, which is what we would get from manual curation. The problem is harder than it looks because the topology is not known in advance and it might change as roads fork or other roads merge. This method here uses a directed acyclic graph as a representation of a lane topology, and it builds on recent progress in using deep networks for predicting structured geometric representations like polygons. And we can apply a similar architecture to other types of road markings, for example, crosswalks. For traffic control elements that are not on the ground, like traffic lights and stop signs, we can use networks that take in input images and a 3D point cloud, typically the point cloud you would get from the geometric map, and use a deep network that fuses these different sensor modalities to detect objects in the 3D world. And in general, using ML for automating HD semantic maps is a very active area of research and you can likely find a deep net for detecting your favorite traffic control element from lane boundaries to traffic lights, from crosswalks to stop signs. One problem with the mail though, is that it does not work all the time. For example, a traffic light detector could miss a traffic light or a lane detector may recover the position of lane boundary with some inaccuracies. One way to tackle this problem is by aggregating data collected through time, which is the same principle that we saw for geometric maps earlier. On the left, we apply this principle to traffic lights and other traffic signs. 
While an ML model might miss a traffic light from a single observation, we can reach robustness by aggregating multiple observations, as it is much less likely that the model will miss the traffic light in all of them. On the right, we apply the same principle to detecting 3D lane centers, which we do by aggregating many trajectories of vehicles driving through a street over time. And you can see that things get better the more data we have, the more trajectories we have. By putting all these concepts together, we have a plausible path towards automated large-scale HD maps, both geometric and semantic. However, I would like to point out that the need for very accurate HD maps has traditionally been driven by the rule-based systems used in Autonomy 1.0. While many current machine learning models for planning and prediction in Autonomy 2.0 still use HD maps, it is unclear if ML methods will always have the same strict requirement on maps as rule-based systems. Another important question is, how much of what is today in an HD map needs to be pre-computed offline versus being detected online on the SDV? Today, there are methods that can detect some traffic control elements online. For example, this recent work can detect the 3D position of lane boundaries with respect to the vehicle without requiring a map. So this is promising, but as I mentioned at the start, HD maps contain a lot of rich and accurate information, and recovering all this content online in real time remains a challenging task, especially if you want to do it robustly. And the last question is whether we need HD maps at all. For example, there are end-to-end -end approaches that learn to make planning decisions directly from the raw sensor data without using an explicit map representation. This is very much an open question, like the other two, and answering them is very important for the future of maps within Autonomy 2.0. Thank you very much for your attention.